Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Random. Berto is your host. Thank you so kind of for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show today. Let's see. Time to ride out, says Bruce Holler. Time to ride out. Hey, Michael Rudnan says, I am not feeling well today. Aches, chills, tiredness, coughing, sneezing, congestion. It's probably just a cold, but what's the chances I've caught COVID a second time? Don't have any COVID tests remaining, so the pharmacy tomorrow. Probably only staying a while today. My brother, please get healthy. Please get well. Drink a lot of fluids. Drink a lot of orange juice, vitamin C, zinc, etc. Boost that immune system. But I'm so sorry that you're not feeling good. I mean, you started that with yesterday. I remember yesterday you spoke about how you were tired, etc. Well, look, folks, uh, let's all give Brother Rudnan our positive affirmation. We need Brother Rudnan around here. He makes sure and keep us on our T's uh, or keep our T's crossed, our I's dotted. Let's see. Vit uh, says vitamins ain't going to help at all. I get, Well, you know, some people say yes. Some people say no. I don't know. Vitamin C usually helps me. I think whenever I start to get something for me, it's vitamin C and zinc. You know, uh, I'm not going to argue. Some some people say there are studies that says good. Some says the, not good. I don't know. I, I, I try it. You know, what the heck. But anyway, what we got here is Brother Rudnan under the, uh, under the weather. Let's give him more positive affirmations. Brother Rudnan, positive affirmations. Please get better soon. Michael Rudnan says, Berta vitamin C is about preventing scurvy. It does nothing for illness. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Eric Hayes, welcome aboard. Uh, Michael Rudnan, welcome aboard. Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain. You know, I just love to say Barcelona, Spain. That's, it just sounds great. Although it's really Barcelona, España. And she would tell you now, she knows how to speak Spanish very well. Barcelona, España es donde está nuestra fabulosa, nuestra ella, Melanie Keelan. Welcome to our show, Melanie Keelan. May Wood is in the house as well. Good afternoon, May Woods. E2247 says, hola, Egberto. Hi, Egberto. And I've, I've saluted Brother Bruce before. And e, let's see who else we got in the house. Yvette Avery Herod. Let me, let me serenade Miss Herod in Spanish. Nuestra bella, nuestra hermosa. Como esta nuestra, nuestra héroe de los uniones. O de las uniones, de las uniones, de las uniones. Welcome aboard, Yvette Avery Herod. Uh, anybody else is in? I think I've got those that are in right now. Where are all my peeps? Um, YouTube is kind of slow today. Anyhow, let's see if uh, any more is going to show up. I am hoping or I think that our email has already gone out. I think, I think, I think. Let's make sure. Let's see if that is out. The email that says it's out, it's out. So we will have more people coming in shortly. Anyhow. What's on your mind today? Uh, would it be that maybe the Republican policies that they are urging uh, President Biden to go to, to accept, to acquiesce to, will starve several Americans? Well, you know, I'm going to start with that story today from, um, from the common, common, uh, common dreams, because when I saw that story, it really hurts the heart. Let's go ahead and get that on the screen real quickly. It goes like this. U.S. family hunger woes growing as GOP targets food aid cuts for millions. It's already hard enough for parents to make ends meet, and now they're being put at the center of these dangerous political games, said one of the advocates. I want you to think about this. Have you been to the store? I don't do the shopping around here for groceries, etc., my wife does all the groceries every now and then. They just send me, Egberto, go buy that, go buy that. And I just do what they tell me to buy. But the other day I went shopping. The other day I went shopping. Welcome aboard, Lloyd. Chuck Tackwell. Welcome aboard. I went shopping to the grocery store where I actually bought groceries. In other words, I was a part of looking like I buy groceries. And I'm going to tell you something, guys. I was in shock when I saw how little, how much I paid for how little I got and what the grocery costs are. So it's, it's true. Inflation on groceries has been pretty high. And yes, they said that it's now 
almost none exist. It's zero, meaning the, the price increases have stopped, but they are where they're at right now. The prices haven't really substantially dropped to what I would call a, a, an area that is marginally good. Why is that? That's the corporations. There are many, many, many factors, right? A lot of it, for when it comes to produce, etc., we have a lot of produce in, 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 in uh, Florida and other places that are spoiling because of Republican policies have the immigrants running all over the place. So they're not doing their, their, their picking the fruits. A lot of stuff is staying on the ground and rotten. Republican policy. Uh, the prices are high because corporations realize that if they become monopolies, they can monopolize and they can charge you whatever and you just have to buy it. And of course, as long as people have some money in their pockets, they take it back away from you. So we've had uh, wages increasing, but all the increases in wages, real increase in wages, have been going to pay for higher medical costs, higher education costs, higher grocery costs, and all these things. In other words, they want to keep you down because all the profits go to the few. This is not some sort, this is not something that cannot be proven. You can actually see this in the charts. You can see this in the number. But as the story says, as Republican lawmakers on Friday walked away from negotiations over raising the United States arbitrary debt limit, notice we say arbitrary because there is no real debt limit, claiming the Biden administration has been unreasonable its refusal to accept steep spending cuts, a new survey showed how a majority of U.S. families are already struggling to afford essentials that would become even less accessible if the GOP gets its way. Parents Together Action on Friday released the results of a survey taken this week of nearly 500 low- and middle-income families finding that 75% of parents who benefit from the special supplemental nutrition programs for women, infants, and children would, that's WIC, would be unable to provide their families with nutritious foods without the program, whose funding would reduce what would be reduced by 12%, $800 million under the debt ceiling plan. Look, look at how they raise in hell over $800 million, not even a billion dollars. But when it came for Ukraine, Ukraine, they had no problem. We just send Ukraine. $30 billion. We just send Ukraine $40 billion. We just send Ukraine $100 billion. But to give Americans who are starving, who have issues with raising money to eat, $800 million to cover Americans across the country. Across the country. What do they do? They balk. They want to cut it. Continuing, more than half of WIC recipients told parents together that they would not have enough. They would, would not have been able to afford food for themselves and would have been forced to forego eating meals to food their children if we weren't for the program. 64% of recipients said they would have been unable to afford formula for their infants and 35% said they would not have had the breastfeeding support they needed. Currently, 53% of all infants born in the United States benefit from financial and nutritional assistance through WIC, up from 43% in 2021, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The Biden administration has warned that the cuts proposed by House Republicans would lead to a loss of crucial food uh, formula and breastfeeding assistance for as many as 1.7 million women, children, and infants. So the party of life, the party who believes in the sanctity of life, is willing to sacrifice sacrifice good American citizens, women, children, infants, so that they can continue to give the wealthy huge tax breaks. Welcome aboard, Lee Grant. Welcome aboard, Paul Fleming. Welcome aboard. Uh, I saw somebody else as well. Uh, welcome aboard. So that is, the fa that is the family values party. That is the party that believes in the sanctity of life. That is the party that says, Oh, we cannot, we must protect that, that group of cells in the womb at all cost. But when those cells materialize into a living, breathing human being, we have no desire to provide them assistance for an economic system that we created that screwed them. Yes, it has to go to the Senate, my dear, beautiful lady, Breach MCP. Welcome aboard, Breach. 
Yes, it has to go to the Senate. All right, so continuing. The Biden administration, or rather, uh, Elian Ariesa, executive director of Parents Together, said in a statement that the GOP strategy will backfire. Republicans' proposed budget illustrates just how far they're willing to go to protect billionaires and corporations. Their cruel plan to take WIC away from 1.7 million pregnant or postpartum parents and their babies, leaving countless infants without the formula they need to uh, survive and taking away nutritious food from breastfeeding mothers is not going to go unnoticed. It will go unnoticed if Biden acquiesces to it because they will make it seem like together Republicans and Democrats and independents decided to take food out of the mouths of good American citizens. So what Biden has to do, and we are covering that in one of the videos that we're talking about, Republicans are holding parents, children, and grandparents hostage by threatening to default on our debt if they don't get the budget cuts they're demanding, Ariesa said. If already, it's already hard enough for parents to make ends meet, and now they're being put at the center of these dangerous political games. As the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities said Thursday, House Republicans released their fiscal year 2024 agricultural appropriations bill this week including the harmful policy changes and deep funding cuts needed to adhere to the austere funding caps included in the party's debt ceiling proposal. Want folks to understand this? These guys in their debt ceiling proposal want the Biden administration to, add, to, to negotiate to keep more money away from people who already are having issues to, to, to fund their own, their own ability to exist. To cut funding without putting eligible applicants on waiting lists, this bill guts the increase to benefits for fruit and vegetables that has been in place since 2021 and was implemented based on recommendations by the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine, wrote CPB, uh, CBPP Senior Policy Analyst Katie Berg and Zoe Neuberger. This would cut benefits for nearly, nearly 1.5 million pregnant postpartum or breastfeeding participants and roughly 3.5 million children and one through four. One million adult 50 to 55 would be excluded from the supplemental nutritional program. They can't meet work requirements proposed by the GOP. Who can't meet work requirement uh, proposed by the GOP? The agricultural, the agricultural appropriations bill, uh, and uh, said that Mer, senior director of public policy of National WIC Association offers a preview of clear consequences when Congress arbitrarily caps spending. People, people, people. The evil continues. Folks need to remember that these efforts to shrink the pie of federal spending are completely disassociated from the actual needs of families in this country, said Dietmer. When their growing need of WIC slashing benefit is far from the right answer, the survey by parents together also suggested that the GOP's cuts to food assistance would further reduce the ability of parents across the country to save money for emergencies. 70% of respondents told the GOP that rising costs of food, housing, and other essentials have left them unable to save for the future any longer, and 64% said they've already had to spend some of their savings or emergency. That is a shame but that is who we are. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, uh, let's see. America's economic outlook is brighter when we are leading the world in energy production. Uh, okay, I won't go into that because, you know, that's a lot of, th th that's a lot of words. I want to hear real solutions. Uh, what else have we got here? Egberto, you survived yesterday with family and friends pushing a bake good and fire sticks atop it as you sat that awkwardly being the center of attention as they sang at you. Yay. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun, though. They sang me happy birthday and had a whole lot of food. But anyway, Lloyd Tackwell, let them eat cake. Welcome, Lloyd Tackwell. Um, let's see what else we got. Yvette Avery Howard is at saying, let's make sure that ABQ gets better quickly. Yo, Lloyd, what the F? My sense of humor must be off today. That line hasn't been funny since Maria Antoinette lost her head over it. Bruce Pollard says, more local. The state is not going to pass education vouchers. It will die. That's good. That's very good. The Medicare expansion is going to die too. That's bad. And we must let them pay 
for not passing the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act. I want everybody to go ahead and, and, and tweet this. Texas Republican politicians, by not passing the Medicare expansion to, Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act, implicitly are, are, are murderers as they ensure that many Texans this year and next year will die. Therefore, we must elect progressives in 2024 who will ensure that Texans are cared for. No, it's long. It fits under the 256 caps. But make sure that whatever you write equate what the Texas legislature, the Republican politicians in the Texas legislature are doing. They are murdering their citizens. It's important that that hit the Twitter and, and tag. It is important that it hits Twitter, Tumblr, uh, uh, Instagram. Um, uh, what's the other one? TikTok and everything else. OK, let's do it. Let's do it. Egberto, Biden's waited 97 days uh, thinking gap could. I don't, uh, I don't, Biden didn't have to wait. Biden simply should not have supported any negotiations on the debt limit. Follow the constitution. All right, let's see what else we got here. Let's see what else we got here. Bruce says, we need Bernie too. Who can it be? You want to run, you want to run Bruce? Let's name you Bernie too, Bruce. All right. Egberto, see the terrifying thread with animated perspective of space debris now in prisoning our planet. It's amazing how much crap is out there in space. I remember when I worked on the space station, that was one of the issues. How do you make sure that the space station is maneuverable so that it can go past these different things as they occur? Okay, uh, what else have we got here? What else have we got here that I need to say real quickly? Uh, Carl Cox says, both Eric Hayes and Mike Cisak are always... <laughs> Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. All right, let's go for the first video. I think you guys are going to like this. When many people, when many BIPOCs talk about how so many people would put us uh, in, well, before I get to that, Bridge MCP says, Egberto Willis, my friend's father is terribly ill since January. His hospital insurance runs out soon. They're waiting for a VA bed, but will take two months. She blames Biden and ACA. Yes, a Trumper. Give, t tell her to give me a call. We can actually talk to her about how Republican policy are the ones that are that's harming her father. And she's doing wrong by her father by not acknowledging who is causing her the, in her father's latter days, who's really causing him harm. Republican policy. Republican policy. Anyway, I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. Uh, Bauman has been... Our Marjorie Taylor puts Bauman's uh, at risk. Here we go. Welcome to America. I want to show you how even somebody with the stature of a congresswoman endanger the lives of black men, BIPOCs. I, I, I found this segment that uh, Chris Hayes did with Jamal Bauman about what Marjorie Taylor Greene did, very disconcerting, but you know, not, not surprising. L check this out and then we'll take it on the other side. Where are the migrant what children? What kids? You guys We're lost accepting them. them. We love no, them. We, lost we them. love the There's migrant children. The we lost you them. You can't find them. What, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yeah, migrant children missing. No, 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 we don't know. Oh, I don't know. That's Fox News. That's Fox News. Hey, let me tell you Listen, something. Listen, I need you to say the party. <laughs> <laughs> Yelling, shouting, raising his voice. He has aggressive uh his physical mannerisms are aggressive, and I am concerned about it. I feel threatened by him. Uh, I should note that my, my, my full disclosure, my brother worked for you. He no longer does. Uh, but I, 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 well, what do you want to say to that? Oh, my goodness. I, I mean, it's, it's so nonsensical that it's comical. Uh, you can see clearly in the video that we were like, <laughs> playfully jousting yes, with each other. She was laughing. I was laughing. We were talking about each other's party and certain issues. Um, so the, the demeanor and the disposition, you know, on the steps, it was, it was, it was playful. We were, we were going after each other. Yeah. So for her the next morning to say what she said, 
I mean, it's a complete 180, number one. It's no longer comical now because now you are using historical racist tropes toward black men, menacing his mannerisms. I'm afraid that's the stuff that got, you know, Trayvon Martin killed, Tamir Rice killed, uh, Michael Brown killed. I mean, I believe Officer Darren Smith literally talked about his presence and his strength as an excuse for killing him. And this has happened to black men historically. And so now we're in a dangerous space. And that's why I wanted to be really, really clear uh, to reporters today how reckless and dangerous her statements were. And she should know better. I believe she knows better. This is another reason why we need to teach the accurate uh, history of America in our schools and make sure African-American history is a part of that because uh, her rhetoric and her behavior in Congress outside of me, pictures with the AR-15 with the squad behind her, uh, chasing David Hogg and, 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 and stalking him uh, as he engaged in activism around gun violence, uh, her rhetoric, her language, her behavior has has been aggressive and intimidating since she's gotten into Congress. Now she's trying to displace it onto me. Um, I, I want to say also that if, if this gesture, which you were doing, is aggressive, then I'm the, I, all, all of my paisans <laughs> right, right. are in trouble. That's New York City right there. But it, that is New York City. Right there. But the other, I mean, the other thing to get to the, your, your serious point, I don't want to. Yeah. I mean, what I thought was, well, if, if she had said this without the video, like we have the video, right? So you could look at the video. It's like this is ridiculous. Yeah. But when someone's just like, "This black man is intimidating and yeah. physically aggressive," I mean, yeah, that that's a serious thing to say in the society in which we live and have lived for a long time. Yeah, yeah, and throughout, can have real consequences again throughout American history, and not just about black men, men but women of color as well. And you know, when I first got to Congress and I had my first conversation with the squad, remember they were coming off of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. They would talk about the number of death threats they would receive after Trump would say something about them, send them back or something like that, rise in death threats, have to increase security. So this is dangerous territory we're walking in here. We gotta be very clear about that. And we need her to say on the record, one, she should apologize to me on the record. Uh, two, ask her directly, do you want physical violence to be inflicted upon, upon Congressman Bowman? And let her answer that question. Because at the end of her statement, it was, we need to watch him. That's almost like yeah, what is Donald it? Trump, uh, you know, stand by and stand back to the Proud Boys in that debate a couple of years ago. We need to watch him. What are you what are you saying? It's just yeah. it's crazy. And again, this is why we have to teach history accurately so we can all be more enlightened as we govern. Now, let me tell you. It is when you watch your TV every day and you see crime on TV, the producers that have the host doing what they're doing choose which crimes they're going to highlight. It is so often that most of the crime that they highlight will give the indication that all these violent crimes, all these times, the, the, the thievery, the robberies, etc., they would give you the impression that all these people look like you know what. People of color doing all these crimes and you know everybody else is okay if you assume what you saw on TV was true. And the interesting thing is about democratizing the newsroom has not been successful in ensuring that what you see on TV is actually what is occurring in society. So. What we need to do is not have the guidance, the people who guide our media, the politicians who talk to us. We can't depend on those to give accurate information on what we're doing. We depend on having to educate the grassroots so that when Marjorie Taylor Greene does what she does and says that Jamal Bauman, Congressman Jamal Bauman, is a threat to her. She feels threatened around him when the video actually shows her playful with this man. When she is an instigator that goes around with AR-15s next to the squad, etc. But the aggressor is Jamal Bauman when he has never shown an aggressive piece of sand in his body. 
This is what we must go through. And until we understand that, and as he says, until we learn history and how these things have historically happened, why do most of white Americans believe that somehow the crime rate among black folks, Latino folks, is greater in, in the aggregate than, everybody, than white people in the aggregate? It's not true. First of all, BS in, BS out. Here in my white community of Kingwood, kids don't get arrested when they do things wrong. They don't. I live next to a park where a lot of things happen in the park. And when the cops happen to go out there, these kids get a pat on the back and say, go home to daddy. Go home to mommy. In South Park or Studi Wood, which are predominantly Latino or black or, or, or BIPOC communities. Every anything happens, they go to jail, go straight to jail. And it doesn't matter who the officer is. They go to jail. They get a record. They're in the system. So they're counted. All these kids that do different things out here in this neighborhood. The FBI cannot count them in any stats. You know why? Because they're not arrested. They're not placed into the system. How many times have you seen somebody stop and fighting with cops? And then resolution, they let them go. A friend of mine has been, has been told uh, when, when, when a drunk kid hit him at a McDonald's, the cops comes out and tells him, you know, this guy has a scholarship. He's going to be going to the University of Texas. Could you kind of not uh, press any charges here and just his father's on his way? The cop. Again, what Jamal Bauman went through is something that everyone should be cognizant of. And what Marjorie Taylor Greene did is tantamount to what the woman did in the park in New York when she got upset at a black guy who, got, who, spoke, who said something about her dog and then said, oh, he's attacking me, putting people's lives in danger. That is America. And that is why we have to change it at the grassroots by educating people because those on top love to see that dissension. Those on top wants to make sure that the fear among folks continue because under that condition, they can keep control. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, uh, notice the, the, tweet, the tweet on the screen from Stephen Ratner, an economist. I want you to see, thank you very much, uh, uh, Paul Fleming, for that tweet. I mean, that says it all. I mean, it's so important. Uh, Bridge, you spoke about the VA. Uh, you, should, you, you should send a piece of cake uh, to your friend uh, with, with a card that inspires her to work for her father and point out this difference in what the two budgets look like. 4% increase in discretionary funding by the Biden administration, which actually is under the current inflation rate. But what does the Republican policies want to do? They want to cut those by 47% from the current values. And what does that include? As stated within uh, Brother, uh, the, the tweet that, that he made us aware of, that Brother Fleming made us aware of, look at what it covers. We cut homeland security, transportation, agriculture, education, justice, state, uh, human, uh, human services, EPA, Mission, the Environmental Protection Agencies, the uh, Health and Human uh, Sources, uh, HUD, NASA, Energy, Labor, Interior, Treasury, Commerce, International Aid. You have to be careful when they say we are just going to keep spending at the same level we did in 2022, and you're going to keep the tax cuts, and you're going to keep the defense budget on the growth path that it's on, but you're going to keep the same spending levels, that means those guys that's on the screen right now gets cut. That means defunding the police. That means defunding transportation. That means defunding NASA. That means defund defunding the Interior Treasury and all these other organizations because that's where your discretionary spending discretionary spending is. So what we ask people to be, to be cognizant of what's happening in America, 
to understand when you're hearing these guys speak their platitudes, the Republicans, etc. Understand what they are really doing. They know that this budget is dead. They know that nobody, not even rep other Republicans, are going to want to cut that. This comes directly from the Freedom Caucus, which should be called the Caucus of Enslavers. This comes from the Freedom Caucus. That is what we're talking about. That hurts their people more than it hurts those liberals. Again, I repeat, the policies that are put forth by Republican politicians right now, absent Democrats stopping the evil, stopping the theft, stop, absent Democrats saying, we are not going to do that. Understand what it means. It means that the people that will pay the price are mostly going to be Republicans who voted for these guys for them to then screw them. What should we do about the debt ceiling? I want you to listen to this because this is what we should do. I love it, Marky's response when Katie Tur says, do you, will you negotiate uh, for forcing work requirements on those receiving SNAP food stamps, etc.? And he says, no, I'll vote. I'll vote against that. And why would I vote against that? And, and then Katie says, uh, the poll says that 49% of Republican uh, of Democrats, 66% of independents and 80% of Republicans want a work requirements for food snaps, food, food stamps. And he says, well, did you ask them about the polls about tax cuts for the wealthy? They, she says, oh, they hate that too. Here's the thing. Um, you have to be careful of how you ask the question. People would have a tendency to believe that work requirements are there to reduce the usage of the, the, the SNAP benefits, which would probably reduce the usage of SNAP benefits because you are forcing people who are on food stamps to attempt to find a job. Here's the deal. Most people want to have conditions where they have a job. Now, Forcing all the paperwork and the bureaucracy to create uh, the, the, the system that's going to test people if they, they want, if they're, they're looking for a job and all of that, that bureaucracy costs money. You will, you will probably spend more money on that bureaucracy than those who would try to cheat the system. It's the same reason why when we gave P PPP loans that we didn't ask a whole lot of questions of these businesses. But for businesses, we just throw the money at them and they can do as they please. But for the poor person who are going through the indignities of being poor in this country, we want them to suffer. I want you to listen to how Ed Markey spoke about this and then we'll take it on the other side. One of the people who's urging President Biden to invoke the 14th Amendment, that is the Democratic senator from Massachusetts, Ed Markey. Um, senator, thank you very much. I'm going to ask you about that in a moment, but I do want to ask you about work requirements. If a deal is made on adding work requirements to any one of the areas that Benji Sarlin just laid out, would you say yes to that? Would you vote yes? I would vote no. How outrageous would it be that the trillions of dollars of tax breaks that Donald Trump and these Repu very, very Republicans extracted for billionaires in America and, and millionaires in America are, are untouched. And the only thing we deal with are poor people and work requirements for them in order to receive uh, relatively small benefits from the federal government. That is absolutely unconscionable. So it's just it just shows you how much of the right wing Republican caucus of, of the Republican Party is now controlling this discussion. And from my perspective, uh, it's just cruel. It's heartless. Um, by the way, 50 percent of all children in the United States, 50 percent will be on food stamps will be on SNAP at some point in their life. So can, can you just imagine that's what they're putting uh, on the table as a demand in terms of concessions from the Democratic Party? Unacceptable to me. So I know you call it unconscious, unconscionable. You say it's cruel. I just want to put up what the polling suggests about it. And, and that's Americans broadly think that well, mostly, de mostly Republicans, but independents and even 49 percent of Democrats say they support requiring work requirements for Medicaid or SNAP benefits. Why do you think there is such broad support for this? Well, I, I would ask when you put up that poll that you also put up the identical poll on tax breaks for millionaires and billionaires. 
and trillions of dollars that uh, have been given to them over the, the last five years. The majority of Americans also agree that that tax that millionaires and billionaires should be paid or should be taxed more as well. That's true. So put it on the table. Let's have a reasonable negotiation. Let's have uh, all of the causes of uh, of. Um, the increase in the public debt be discussed. Instead, it's a one-way street. Uh, and uh, to me, uh, it's just something which is unacceptable, which is why I believe at the end of the day, as a last resort, if they're not reasonable, that the president should invoke the 14th Amendment, which says that the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law uh, shall not be questioned. So authorized by law means all the bills that have ever passed uh, in our country's history that authorizes spending have to be honored. And the president can invoke that and just say to them, come back later if you're ever interested in, in having a real negotiation. I want to ask you about that, but one more on work requirements. If it, taxes for the very wealthy were also on the table, would you, would you agree to voting for work requirements if there was also a requirement to raise taxes on the very wealthy among us? Taxes for the very wealthy are never going to be on the table. Uh, we know that any more than uh, cuts in defense spending are ever going to be on the table. The Republicans don't want to look at the two main causes for the increases in our public debt. And then they want to turn to the poorest in our society uh, and punish them uh, for the conditions uh, that they have very little control of. So it's just so imbalanced in terms of what the negotiation is right now, as we're hearing it, uh, that the 14th Amendment should sit there uh, as the last resort, but a necessary resort if the Republicans uh, are not reasonable. And I don't believe that the right wing Republicans and House of Representatives will allow that to happen. Janet Yellen says invoking the 14th Amendment would, would trigger a constitutional crisis. Why do you think she's wrong? Uh, I don't think it's a constitutional crisis. Um, I, I just repeated what the words are. They're very clear on their face. The Supreme Court says that they are textualist. The, the sixth um, seat majority, which uh, now controls the Supreme Court. And if they are textualist, if they read the plain words of the um, 14th Amendment, uh, that the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law should be paid. It's very clear. There's no way around it. And if they do that, it will not be a constitutional crisis. It will be the Constitution uh, upheld and ultimately going back to regular order with the budget and appropriations process for the next Congress uh, being the way in which we deal with all of these questions, which the Republicans are trying to jam inappropriately into this negotiation. So there are 11 senators who agree with you, 11 including you. There's Warren Sanders, Merkley, Tina Smith, Blumenthal, Fetterman, Hirono, Reid, Welch, Whitehouse, and you at Markey. Um, you have a letter. Have you spoken directly to either President Biden about this or anyone, anyone at the White House? Well, we've sent the letter to him. Uh, and um, and uh, obviously, as a result, we are communicating uh, with the White House. And those are the first 11 signatures. That's after 24 hours. I think as people come to understand the 14th Amendment and the requirement to pay our bills, uh, that we're going to have not only a lot of additional support uh, amongst Democrats in the Senate, but all across the country, because that's the way of avoiding draconian cuts or, or, or unconscionable uh, burdens placed upon the poorest in our society. Barring the 14th Amendment, do you think Democrats should dig in, call the Republicans bluff? Look at the, the Republicans are bullies. You know, they're, they bullied their way into stealing two Supreme Court seats. They want to bully their way uh, into using uh, our public debt as a way of extracting unjustified uh, concessions from uh, this uh, congressional uh, process. And we have to stand up to the bullies or else they'll keep coming back over and over and over again. And again, that's why the 14th Amendment is uh, uh, one of the strategies that we have to seriously consider and if necessary to ultimately use. So again, the 14th Amendment is what we need to do. Get rid of the bullies. Stop taking advantage of the poor. Most of the people in the poor want to work. To, for, to, to go ahead and say, we have to have you document all these, these work requirements to go ahead and qualify for what all of us, the, the commons, want to provide to you 
is simply hogwash. We don't do that when we're given tax cuts. We don't do that when we're, we're, we're given subsidies to, 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 gov, uh, to businesses. And that's why the business is the biggest form of welfare in this country. It's, the, it's businesses who rip us off. Businesses who take our monies for, uh, for, for the military. Businesses who create the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex. And all these things, where what do they do? They overbill, they rip us off, and we're going to go off the measly food stamps that we, the few dollars we're giving in food stamps for people and say, to get these measly dollars, we're going to create yet another bureaucracy likely run by a private company to determine if we're going to give you whatever amount of few dollars we give you so that you don't die from hunger. Folks, ask the questions correctly, people, so that when you do a poll, the humanity of people can come out other than what you have instilled in their minds to make the wrong choices. Ed Markey, you're correct. President Biden, the 14th Amendment is the way to go. Let them take it to court. Let them be the ones who say, we don't want to use the 14th Amendment to prevent the catastrophe. So let's cause a catastrophe by having a right wing court vote with us. I doubt they'll do it. The businesses will get to them before. The businesses will definitely tell them you can't do that. Are you crazy? Anyhow, here is uh, what, what's happening. Let's see. Brack, Cheryl Brackens. Let's see if this is somebody who wants to come in. May I help you? Would you like to be on Politics Done Right? Yes, yes, Ed Perto, I, I would like to. Okay, talk to me. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, I've been breaking, breaking down, down this argument, argument for the debt dealing, and Ed, Ed Markey said something, something that is very, very uh, prominent, prominent basically, basically. It's like, like when, it when it comes to, to taxing, taxing the rich, the rich who, who actually, actually get tax, tax credit, credit. At the end of the day, they never seem to want to have that conversation because they're lining their pockets. And Ed Markey said, whenever they have to make a decision, it's always the poorest of us that have to be on the chopping block. So th those of us who are already struggling, trying to use these benefits for our basic needs, they use that as a bargaining tool. To basically say either you're going to cut this or we're not going to have a functioning government and it's malarkey you know at, at any point you know to basically say we are you know it's always like at what point does the government meaning the officials we have elected acknowledge that when you give the resources to the people who need it the most they're going to use it the, million, the millionaires and billionaires, they don't use those extra tax credits for anything but to hoard wealth. They are wealth hoarders. That's all they are. And I love hearing you every day preach what I call the gospel because you say the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you so kindly. This is, I think this sounds like, this is Ray, right? Yes, sir. The one and only. Yeah, because it, that didn't show up on the screen. Another name showed up on the screen. So I just wanted to make sure it was you. But let me tell you, my brother, first of all, thank you for the kudos. Second of all, you're absolutely right about uh, what, what Marky had to say. And thirdly, I want, I want to point this out, right? Most people understand this, but they just, even, even those on the right understand what you're saying. But they themselves just can't believe the evil that they, the people that they voted in actually represent. They can't believe, they don't believe you. So in order to, in order for their minds to be at ease, brother Roy, in, I mean, uh, Ray, in order for their minds to be at ease, they must believe the lies that they get from these alternative fact sources so that they can live with themselves because these are not bad people. They just can't believe their politicians can be this evil to cause this much harm, not only on getting the libs, but this harm is actually more so on them than it is on libs. And that's what we have to try to get. That's how we have to get to them, Brother Ray. But I understand that. But I just don't understand how conservative voters can can contort their minds and and it's it's a mental gymnastic because when i sit there and listen to the lies and the garbage 
and the vitriol that is coming from the other side. I just, I have to ask myself, what type of person listens to this and actually thinks this is a person that these policies and these people who are pushing these policies have any interest whatsoever in what is going to be good for you as a constituent? I can't let figure me, it out. You know, as a let progressive, me, let me I'm, tell, I'm, I'm, I'm I, I read you, Ray. <laughs> I read you, Ray. You're, look, first of all, I can't argue with that. The only thing I can try to do is understand people so that in understanding them, I can somehow later on or slowly get to them. And this didn't start yesterday. This didn't start 10 years ago. Uh, the programming, to, the, the first, let, let me, and I don't, I think you've heard me say this before, but I want to hear, talk to, the, to everybody else that's listened to the conversation you and I are having right now, Ray. And it goes this way. For a very long time, we understand that a collective government that takes our resources together for those things that belong in the government sector. I'm not talking about, look, I don't want the government owning pizza shops. I don't want the government owning uh, hardware stores and that kind of stuff. That belongs in the free enterprise. I don't want the government owning things of entertainment and all of that. That doesn't belong in the domain of the government. But for healthcare, yeah. For energy, yeah. All these things I want government to have a hand in so that we are not gouged by the things that we must have. If you must have it, it means that those who offer it uh, can easily create a monopoly if it's not very well regulated. So here's what I'm saying now. These people were taught to believe that government is bad. And how do they do that? They first had to disassociate. They had to disassociate you, the person, from government. Even though even within our flawed constitution, we talk about we the people is our government. Right? right? We the people we is the our people. government. So therefore, uh, they had to create that draconian disassociation with person from government. If you can disassociate person from government, then you can malign government and cause that person to hate everything relative to government, which is something that you ostensibly should be controlling. And so they, in effect, have created bad government by forcing people into the false belief that government is bad. And as such, they elect those who think government is bad and those they elect make government bad. Uh, it, it, is, it is a circular, uh, what we would call in, uh, what we call in software programming, the deadly embrace. The deadly embrace is what they've done. They have made the, the Republican section of our country now, and by the way, it wasn't always the Republican. I mean, I'm not going to give the, the Dixocrats and the Democrats a break. They once were oh, yeah. horrendous. Right. Definitely. <laughs> we have one running for mayor. Exactly. So we have to understand, we have to understand that this is not a, this is, this is a deep thing that they have perfected over years and years and years. We can't expect to get these people to create, a, have a love for government in the immediately we have to show them that government can work and that's what biden has been trying i don't i'm not a biden fan but biden has been doing a fairly darn good job in making government work the reason 2008 then rather the reason 2021 didn't look like 2008 or 2009 the 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 deep recession created by the the uh, the crash of the of the uh, the crash of all the banking. The reason we didn't look like that in 2021 is because the Keynesian input that Biden did. He was not scared to create a, a humongous Keynesian input into our economy, which prevented the economy from cratering, which would have occurred. There are all the, uh, the, the problem here as well, Brother Ray, is how do, you, how do you tell a population that Republicans are purposely miseducating and making rather dumb? How do you educate that population and show them basic Keynesian economics that even Reagan used? How did Reagan get out of his cataclysm? Reagan increased the defense budget by a humongous amount. 
He did not raise taxes, which means he deficit spended, which was more deficit spending than any president at that time. Keynesian economics. Let, 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 Go ahead, Ray. Let me let me reference something you in in your book actually when you talk about uh, I think it was right wing, how to talk to your right wing neighbors. You had yes, a chapter sir. on voodoo economics, right? And it was actually George H. W. Bush, yes, who called out that as a ridiculous policy. Exactly. He was a Republican. Yes. But we've gotten to a point where Republicans can't even basically admit when a policy just doesn't work. They just won't admit it. They'll lie to their through their teeth down to their lower colon. Exactly. And, you know, it's like I challenge all Republican voters to say whenever you hear a Republican say that the government is broken. Well, ask yourself. What are they doing to fix it? It seems like they're working harder to break it more. They're always exactly. saying the government doesn't work, but they're always making a valiant effort to make you to prove why it doesn't work. Exactly. And, and, and now going back to that book, in, uh, uh, actually, the book that I wrote that spoke more about the economy as far as how it works, right? Uh, it was called, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom. And in that book, I actually gave President Bush one, the one that came right before Clinton, I gave him the deserved right. kudos that he had. And the reason I gave him kudos was when he, he ran with, with he called uh, supply side economics, voodoo economics. He stayed with Reagan for a lot for the, the eight years that Reagan reigned. And when he became president to create, to clean up the, to start the cleanup of the disaster that was created by Reagan, he went against his promise in Houston. When he went against all these folks, he said, read my lips. No more, no. no new taxes. He said that. And when it was time, however, and he looked at the paperwork and he looked at the deficits and he looked at all of this, Brother Bush said the following, I have got to go against what I promise. And he started raising taxes and he started that recovery of that horrendous deficits that we had that was bush number one and and clinton came in after bush number one continued the decline in the budget deficits by raising taxes again not one republican read it in my book as i see it class warfare the only resort to, to right-wing doom not one republican voted for the bill they said it would crash the economy they said all these things and guess what happened there has not been a president in the United States, except for now Biden because of the crash in employment that had occurred. But there was not one president in American history that created more jobs, whether absolute or per capita, than Bill Clinton. And that Democrats are unable to articulate that reality and make it seem like it was a Reagan revolution that created a lot of jobs, where the reality was it was a Clinton revolution who created 21 million jobs versus 16 million from Reagan. Look it up. This is all data available for all to see. Democrats make lousy salespeople, mostly because too many of them are neoliberals that don't want their policies to be too successful because people will realize the fallacy that is an uh, absolute capitalist system that we have today. Continue, my friend, before we got to go. Go ahead, Brother Ray. Yeah, and I mean, kudos to, to Bill Clinton. I remember that. You know, he was the yeah. only president that in my lifetime that was able to balance the budget and yes. that was because he raised taxes yes. and that's what needs to happen. It's very simple. If you have a, a government that has resources and you need to divvy those resources, where do you go to get those resources? You go to the biggest source, but exactly. instead the way our government currently functions, they rather let the big, they'd rather let the big fish go because that's too much of a hassle. You know, they have lawyers and stuff on their behalf and they rather go after the little fish, which is the poor and working class people who don't have that same shield to, to basically right. shield them from 
taxes or or even I don't mind paying taxes as long as I know my taxes is going to something worthy. But as exactly. long as I know it's going to war and subsidizing uh, rich predatory people. companies, I don't like that. Yes. You know what is interesting, Ray? Because here's a funny thing. Because uh, we have a, we have somebody that finally admit to something Clinton did right that it surprised me. My brother Eric Hayes here says, Egberto, Clinton had a balanced budget, but nothing came of it. I just told the entire room. I just told the entire room that the, the person that has created the most jobs in American history before this pandemic was Bill Clinton. Not Reagan but Bill Clinton and Eric. Now, even hearing the truth, he comes when he says, yes, Clinton had a balanced budget, but nothing came of it. No, fiscal responsibility and correct taxation gave us, gave us the largest employment picture bar none. Is that nothing, Eric? Again, we have to start using our minds. We're coming close to the uh, end of the show, Brother Ray. Anything you want to add before we go? Oh, yeah. Well, basically, Reagan was the one who ruined our country, and his trickle-down economics still lives to this day. We need to beat that if we're going to get this country back in the right direction. Absolutely. Thank you, Ray. Thank you for calling in. And, you know, I, I, I'm, 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 I want this stuff to become yes, folks sir. to call in a bit more. I appreciate your call. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you constantly listening to our stuff and promoting what we're doing. You are a wonderful person. Thank you very much, Brother Ray. You too. And have a great weekend, Egberto. You too, sir. All right. Um, anyhow, uh, we got to get out of here, folks. But before we get out, I'm going to go about a minute over because I want to ask you guys, uh, I, I, I finally got the link up for, uh, supporting, um, our trip to, um, my trip to net roots. So what I want to do, I, I, I think I have it in here. What I want to do is give you the link to support, uh, the trip. And like I said, everybody who supports the trip you will be getting a. Um, you will be a producer of the the, the each video. You, your name would appear. Your name will appear in the scroll for the video, as well of, of every video. We'll have anywhere between 25, 50. I think it's going to be closer to fifty videos that you'll see out there because I generally interview at least at least forty people. There is a good probability that I will have many more than that. I should have had this stuff already for you already. I'm so sorry, but you know how it goes here sometimes. Uh, let's see if that's it. That's not it. That's not it. Uh, it's in Hotmail more than likely. Let's see. I'm, I'm coming to it right now. What I want to tell you guys is uh, please support. Here it is. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, that's it. Please support our, uh, our fundraiser. For the trip to Chicago, you can find it right here. I just prepared it today. I'll go ahead. Let me, yeah, I just prepared it today. That is how you can support uh, Netroots. Uh, let's see, Netroots. Let me put it in. Netroots Chicago support. And here is the link. And what are you going to get for everybody who, uh, no matter what you give, will be on the scroll for the every video that we produce out of Netroots Nation uh, 2023. Those that give, there's going to be several ranges. Those who give 25 bucks, I haven't written it up yet. $25 will get uh, some more recognition, $50, maybe a link uh, at, with, with a page, etc. I'm going to finish that all up tonight and I'll be sending it out in, my, uh, in one of my newsletters. Uh, over the weekend. But I just want to give you guys a head start. If you want to put a few uh, dollars in there to support the trip, uh, we, we will be most indebted to you for doing that. Anyhow, I got to get out of here. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We, 
spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.